that. We have a fruitful relationship with NACA. We've been working with them since 2019 through various capacity building projects, and we formally signed an MOU in January of this year. So this event is a testament to the ongoing strength of our continuing partnership. I hope you enjoy today. I hope you get a lot out of today. And I look forward to seeing the exciting ideas that may come out of it. And I'd now like to introduce my Ukrainian colleague, Andrei Butenko, the head of NACA, who will say a few words. Andrei, over to you. Turn on your mic, Mr. Ributenko. Turn on your mic, please. Do we still have Andrea? I saw him. Andrea Petrovic, please put your mask on your microphone. Natalia, if, if Andre isn't here, perhaps you would like to give his welcome. I'm sorry, you can hear me. Here we are. Andre, yeah, I'll, I'll hand over to you. Yeah. I'm very sorry. Good morning, Shanoni Kolegi, еще раз. Дуже дякую вам за те, що приєдналися до сьогоднішнього заходу. Перш за все, я б хотів подякувати нашим колегам з британського агентства QA за їхню неймовірну підтримку, за те невпинне прагнення допомогти українським студентам, освітянам зробити нашу вищу освіту набагато кращою. QA є одним з найбільших наших партнерів. І за останні чотири роки завдяки спільним проектам багато українських освітян пройшли тренінги команди QA. Вони навчилися розбудовувати і будувати якісну освіту. Ми дуже вдячні за це. Так і сьогоднішній захід ми проводимо разом, разом, але з ініціативи саме QA. Сьогодні ми зможемо почути важливі, емоційні, змістовні виступи від наших українських студентів, викладачів, про їх бачення побудови якісної освіти і про важливість цього процесу, незважаючи на війну. Але дещо випереджаючи моїх колег, я б хотів зазначити, що Національне агентство із забезпечення якості вищої освіти України активно працювало з нашими партнерами, університетами, студентами, викладачами кожного дня. Ми намагались допомогти в вирішенні їхніх проблем, що були викликані нелюдською поведінкою російських військ. Тому ми чудово знаємо про те проблеми, які стоять перед нашими колегами. Я б хотів зазначити що ми, мабуть, одне з небагатьох, якщо не єдине в світі агентство, яке працює в умовах війни. Мені б хотілося, щоб ми були єдиним агентством, і жоден народ ніколи не дізнався про ті страхи, ті трагедії, які переживають зараз українці. Незважаючи на те, що щодня, а в деякі дні щогодини, ми отримуємо жахливу інформацію про ракетні удари, що наносяться по нашим університетам, про загибель наших колег, студентів, викладачів, Ніхто з нас ні на хвилину не втрачав е, впевненість у нашій перемозі. У перемозі не лише нашої армії, а й в перемозі нашого світогляду, нашої філософії, згідно з якою освіта сильніша за бомби і ракети. Та в той же час нам важливо е, розуміти, що Ресурси України ще тануть щодня. Нам боляче це розуміти. Нам важко зупиняти лекції через виття сирен. А в Харкові, Миколаєві, Запоріжжі та в інших містах щодня зупиняти заняття через реальні бомбардування та обстріли. Зізнаюсь, багатьом нашим викладачам все важче знаходити емоційні ресурси для підтримки своїх студентів. Але ми бачимо, як нас підтримує світ. Ми відчуваємо підтримку європейської спільноти. Усі українці з неймовірною шаною ставляться до братських європейських народів, що підтримують нас щодня справами. Ми розуміємо, на які свідомі, важкі економічні наслідки йдуть ці народи, 
ми розуміємо, що це братська підтримка не на словах, а на справі. І ми розуміємо, що це спільна боротьба за наше життя. Ми дуже вдячні за це. Ми, як Національне агентство, неодноразово адресували наші публічні звернення до світян світу закликами підтримати нас та наші принципи і звернути увагу на співпрацю з Росією і припинити цю співпрацю, припинити будь-яку співпрацю з Росією на світанському полі. Ми впевнені, що саме брак якісної освіти в Росії, яка не формує критичне мислення, яка не побудована на засадах демократії, яка не розвиває принципи відкритості, не використовує принципи гуманізму, призвело до неймовірної трагедії, яка відбувається щодня. Саме через брак якісної освіти, формування простих навичок, а не формування думаючої людини. Сотні тисяч росіян радо підтримують своїх божевільних правителів і щодня вбивають українців. Саме через брак гуманізму в освітній політиці Росії понад 100 тисяч людей втратили своє життя. Але ми з вами мудрі, нас не обманути. І ми розуміємо, що якісна освіта важлива в будь-який, в будь-який час. Без якісної освіти у народі не буде майбутнього. Сьогоднішній проект направлений на пошук шляхів співпраці українських і британських колег. Наша команда переконана, що ми зможемо закласти на ріжні камені фундамент багатьох цікавих і корисних проєктів, що допоможуть нашим університетам співпрацювати, ділитися знаннями і зробити, зроблять разом цей світ набагато краще. На сам кінець я ще раз хочу подякувати колегам з QA за цю неймовірну ініціативу і за організацію сьогоднішнього заходу. Сподіваюся, що Через декілька годин ми будемо бачити багато цікавих і корисних векторів спільної співпраці для розвитку якісного світу. Дякую велике. Ну, це вже. Ми ж не актуально. Ні, ми спіємо. Uh, dear Vicky, dear Andre, uh, thank you for welcome words and uh, common QA and the NACA initiative to have this event as a platform for collaboration for the UK and Ukraine and higher educational institutions to support our students' learning experience during the war time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as, as you mentioned, the QAA and NACA collaboration has started once the NACA was launch launched, and uh, uh, we highly appreciate all the efforts and contributions from QAA colleagues' side. So thank you very much. Uh, dear participants of the event, my name is Natalia Stukala, I'm NACA, NACA Vice Head, and I will facilitate Ukrainian Voice session. And I would like to start uh, uh, with the following. So in the beginning of July in London, British Council conducted a large-scale event devoted to the UK-Ukrainian cultural response to the war. And this event became a good platform for starting uh, and, and starting point to a lot of uh, useful initiatives, and some of them we discussed with Olga Budnik. Uh, now it is my pleasure to give the floor to Olga Budnik, uh, who is Advisor Presidential Commissioner for Matters of the Fund of President of Ukraine uh, uh, for the support of education, science and sports. Olga, the floor is yours. Uh, dear Natalia, dear Andre, dear colleagues, thank you very much uh, for the invitation and for this uh, great event. Uh, and uh, I let me congratulate uh, us with this important initiative and thank all of you who have already put efforts to help and strengthen the edu Ukrainian educational system. Uh, we really ap appreciate that the guiding principles of our partnership are to support, support Ukrainian universities and uh, the integrity of the Ukrainian higher education system by supporting universities to continue to support academics and uh, teach students. What is important for us is to minimize brain drain cause, caused by the war, by allowing students and academics uh, to maintain their link with their universities here in Ukraine. And we really want that they have good and very high quality education. We are aware and really grateful that uh, the UK universities are currently supporting with the immediate needs of Ukrainian partner universities, academics and students and have already committed significant funding and efforts. But what is much more important for us is to make such 
cooperation systemic, and uh, we believe that the support with the capacity building introduction of new quality assurance models and the development of Ukrainian universities will bring us to the future which we are fighting for on all fronts, not only on military, but also on educational one. Thank you for leadership in this initiative, Quality Assurance Agency and uh, NACA, that put a lot of efforts to make our cooperation very fruitful and deep. And I hope it will become even deeper than now. Uh, we appreciate the support from the UK government and believe that our collaboration will bring historical results. The hardest thing for us is to look into the future and plan something, but uh, we want and we will do everything to bring the future for Ukraine. Uh, wish all of us fruitful cooperation and bright results. I believe that our uh, today's discussion will be very interesting and uh, I'm waiting for it. Thank you very much and have a good work here today. Thank you very much, Olga. Olga will be back uh, to the uh, panel discussions and she will be one of the facilitators. So you will have chance to, uh, to discuss with Olga uh, all those initiatives and future perspectives of uh, the UK, uh, Ukraine collaboration in, in the educa higher educational sphere. And uh, uh, let me move to NAPA activities and the students' engagement into uh, NAPA activities during the war time. Next slide, please. So first of all, just very, very brief uh, and, uh, how NACA uh, or, or NACA activities during uh, the first three years of its activities. Actually, NACA was established and launched in January 2019. And before the full scale uh, war invasion uh, in February 2022, it was just three years of our activities. And um, the system, but, uh, within these three years, the system uh, of quality assurance uh, in Ukraine was uh, launched and uh, uh, students are widely engaged into, into the system. We uh, have, uh, uh, in our expert register, we have more than uh, 4,000 uh, experts and among them we have 1,465 students who were uh, recruited, trained, and uh, included into the register. Uh, uh, students participate in each program, study program accreditation, so stu uh, students are in included into the expert panels. Uh, we also mm, try to ensure compliance with ESG 2015, and uh, we um, uh, align all our criteria to 2000, uh, ESG 2015, and uh, we also uh, pilot SAR uh, self-assessment report uh, in order to become, uh, in, in order to become, I'm sorry, uh, uh, NCA uh, uh, full member. By this moment, NACA is uh, NCA affiliate and uh, full member of CNCA and Vinquahe and ICAI. Uh, and uh, actually, students are involved into all our activities in all this. Um, um, you know, in all these organizations. Uh, next, uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, um, next slide, please. Uh -huh. uh, uh, this slide presents how uh, in figures how students engage into NACA activities. So we have uh, two students representatives in NACA board. Uh, so two students out of twenty three NACA board members. We have one student in each expert panel, uh, as I mentioned, and we have conducted more than 4,000 study programs accreditation. So uh, um, student expert participated in all these accreditations. I mentioned the number of student experts is uh, almost uh, 1.5 uh, thousand uh, uh, student experts. Uh, we also have subject area councils and the subject area councils, uh, they all include uh, student members, and uh, and we continue to work with student experts. And uh, our updated register is uh, includes uh, uh, one thousand two hundred sixty-eight active student experts. Next slide, please. We uh, starting uh, uh, from February twenty-four. Uh, NACA continues is uh, its all activities, and we. Uh, became uh, we try to ensure uh, all all our responsibilities and all our activities at uh, at high level 
uh, we continue with supportive communication with students, with uh, higher educational representatives, with institutions. We collect feedback from students in order to uh, implement and to address it uh, in all our activities. We hold Q&A sessions. We have Telegram channel uh, for our students. Uh, we uh, uh, also inform the society on the world consequences for higher education and also uh, our uh, we report uh, on needs and uh, challenges which our students uh, face. We uh, initiate and manage different projects, among them those which are totally devoted to the students' learning experience during the war time. For instance, we have um, a project uh, on the student survey, uh, uh, Steve Mahal Academy. <clears throat> uh, we also have project with quality matters from the US uh, on uh, quality of online education and how to improve the design of the uh, of the online courses uh, which are delivered to our students. Uh, as I mentioned, we continue with self-assessment and compliance with ESG and uh, we have developed national action plan and students were involved into the national action plan uh, development uh, and uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned, we uh, engage students into accreditation process and uh, um, and also consider all the issues related to the experience of getting the diplomas during the wartime. So uh, and uh, all our activities are directed to support uh, students during this very challenging time. Uh, so this this is all actually uh, which I want briefly mention. Of course, we will be able to discuss today uh, NAFA experience in more depth during the facility uh, during the discussion panels. And uh, uh, let me uh, uh, move to uh, Ukrainian universities' practices in terms of supporting students' learning experience during the war time. We have uh, three uh, speakers uh, from uh, different Ukrainian universities. And uh, actually, the Russian war against Ukraine has started much earlier than uh, on, on February 24. Uh, you know that Crimea and Donbass uh, areas were occupied since 2014. And some universities were relocated in 2014. And among them, the biggest and the most successful was still uh, the next national university. Uh, in 2014, this university was moved uh, almost uh, 800 kilometers from the native uh, city Donetsk to Vinnytsia city. And uh, now, uh, in seven years, uh, this university is not only became a leading uh, university in Vinnytsia region, but also keeps its leading positions among uh, Ukraine, other Ukrainian universities. And I would like to invite vice rector of these universities to share the experience of relocation and rebuilding university uh, at the new territory. Tatiana Nahagnak, first uh, vice rector of the Vasil Stus, the next national universities. The floor is yours, Tatiana. Дуже дякую, пані Наталія. Шановні колеги, дякую за можливість презентувати Стусівський кейс і бути тим українським українським голосом, який сьогодні говорить про якість вищої освіти. Шановні британські колеги, дуже дякую вам за можливість говорити сьогодні українською мовою, мовою великого українського народу, який сьогодні боронить не тільки українську землю, а й всю Європу від російських загарбників. Маю честь сьогодні говорити про стусівський кейс про стусівський кейс якості, якому 8 років. Якщо можна, пані Альбіна, наступний слайд. Уявіть собі, прошу, 14-й рік, 13 тисяч студентів, от таку прекрасну інфраструктуру. Ми щойно закінчили Євро-2012, прекрасне чисте місто і російські солдати, ФСБ, які когось від когось намагаються вивільнити. Відповідно, Донецьк боровся. Наступний слайд. Перед вами не світлини з інтернету, а перед вами українські мітинги за свободу. Пані Альбіна, можна наступний слайд? Перепрошую. 
Це наші українські мітинги, де ми вперше в 2014 році побачили, як вбивають наших студентів і як забирають в полон наших викладачів, працівників, випускників і студентів. Донецьк стояв в 2014 році, проте «Руська весна» диктувала абсолютно інші принципи існування. І, відповідно, 16 вересня, наступний слайд, прошу, наша інфраструктура була захоплена. Колектив Донецького університету прийняв рішення переміщатись за 750 кілометрів, як сказала пані Наталія. І я дуже дякую на той час міністру освіти і науки Сергію Квіту, а потім голові Національного агентства і всім нашим колегам з Національного агентства за підтримку протягом всіх цих років і в акредитації, і в поширенні культури якості. Уявіть собі, що ми зібрали все своє життя в одну валізу і перемістились в центр України, в Вінницю. Прошу наступний слайд. Спочатку це була взагалі одна кімната, а перед вами от той кейс, який незалежно від того, то був студент, викладач, працівник або прибиральниця, ми були одним колективом, однією родиною, яка відновлювала будівлі для того, щоб розпочати навчальний рік. Нас було 10. 5 жовтня нас було 10 осіб, які приїхали в Вінницю. Сьогодні ми маємо 5 тисяч. 5 тисяч Сусівського університету. І дійсно ми входимо в десятку кращих класичних університетів України. Це не тільки довіра вінничан і українського народу. Це громадянський подвиг того колективу, до якого я маю честь бути причетною. Сьогодні я згадую, чи саме цей період, жовтень 2014 року, пам'ятаю і буду пам'ятати, що на той момент ми залишили 36 викладачів, працівників наших в полоні російських окупантів в Донецьку і вже з Вінниці ми витягували цих наших колег. Я дуже дякую нашим міжнародним партнерам, якщо можна наступний слайд, за визнання. Ми сьогодні єдиний заклад вищої освіти України, який в 2015 році отримали премію Freedom Awards від Atlantic Council саме за розбудову свободи. Тому що ми були першим закладом вищої освіти, за яким потім ще 19 були в процесі релокації, змінили свої юридичні адреси і стали провідними українськими закладами вищої освіти, які плекали якість. Я сьогодні говорю про Стусівський кейс, якщо можна наступний слайд. Кейс, який розпочався в 2014 році, про те, що навчання і викладання не було єдиною формою нашого існування. З 2014 року працює кіберармія Стусівського університету, з 2014 року відкриті волонтерські центри, з 2014 року паралельно з традиційною наукою стусівці демонструють більше тисячі політичних і лінгвістичних експертиз терористичних текстів. Аналіз законодавства і саме сьогодні стусівці розпочинають перехідне правосуддя, яке таке настільки важливе сьогодні в Україні. Стусівці в 2014 році налаштували таким чином асинхронне навчання, що переїхавши до Вінниці 5 жовтня, ми вже 3 листопада розпочали навчальний рік. В 2014 році були відкриті абсолютно всі аккаунти, коли студент, і це дійсно студентоцентроване навчання, а студенти знаходились в по різних боків абсолютно тих кордонів, які ми контролювали і не контролювали. І ми довели до кінця кожного студента, який залишився з нами в 2014 році. На сьогодні ситуація повномасштабного вторгнення надала ще більших актуальностей всім тим електронним ресурсам, з якими ми працюємо. Якщо можна... Наступний слайд. Більше ста студентів і викладачів сьогодні перебувають в лавах ЗСУ. Ми вважаємо, що допомога має бути тихою. 
Тому на наших сайтах ви не знайдете кількості донатів і кількості переданих кілограмів допомоги або автівок і інших закуплених необхідностей для наших героїв. Проте, відповідно, я сьогодні дуже пишаюсь колективом студентів, випускників, викладачів, працівників, які паралельно з навчанням і викладанням щодня наближають нашу перемогу. Наступне, якщо можна. Навчальні лабораторії, попередні, навчальні лабораторії були відновлені завдяки нашим міжнародним партнерам, але наука, класична наукова, наукові дослідження, вони змогли бути відновлені завдяки нашим партнерам в різних куточках світу. І саме протягом цього періоду я пишаюсь тим, що більше ста наших колег стали докторами філософії і кандидатами наук. Більше 50 наших колег стали докторами наук. Відповідно, наступний слайд. Це стало можливим завдяки тому, що вони закінчували свої дослідження. Пані Альбіна. Завдяки тому, що вони закінчили свої дослідження в університетах Великобританії, Німеччини, Франції, Австрії, Угорщини, Польщі, США і Канади. Дякую всім нашим партнерам за те, що у нас є і продовжується така можливість. Ми пам'ятаємо, що університет – це в першу чергу сигнальна функція. І тому, якщо можна, наступний слайд. І ще наступний. Тому цього року ми відкриваємо п'ять нових програм, і ми віримо в те, що саме формуючи суспільні блага, університет виходить на відновлення України ще зараз під час війни. Саме тому ми… Наступний слайд, прошу, Альбін. Ми відкрили п'ять програм управління постконфліктними територіями, психологічну реабілітацію, соціальне підприємництво, екохімбезпеку і цифрову бізнес-дипломатію. Це саме ті фахівці, з якими ми формуємо наше відновлення України. І дякую всім партнерам, які залучилися до моніторингу змісту, до формування змісту нових освітніх програм. Слава Україні і Боже бережи королева! Героям слава! Дякую дуже! Uh, dear Tatiana, thank you to your university and all dedication and all activities you are doing. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, Dnipro is a very special city for me because Dnipro is my native city and starting from 2014 it became uh, a firewall for the whole Ukraine and the same did uh, its university, receiving refugees, supporting their colleagues and students from uh, who were relocated, uh, uh, but but uh, but uh, Nipro University is still uh, keeping its high quality of education and uh, high quality of students' learning experience. Uh, I give the floor to Mikola Trehuk, who is vice rector uh, for prospective development of the Nipro University of Technology. Mikola, the floor is yours. So, dear colleagues, can you hear me? Is everything okay? Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for presenting us. And uh, on behalf of uh, our whole our university, I'd like to say a few words about educational activities amid the war. So, uh, as uh, Pani and Natalia have already told us, that uh, Dnipro is really, really close to the war and really close to the edge. And uh, despite all of these things, uh, we are uh, trying to think globally. And uh, um, even during the war, we are trying to focus on strategical tasks that are uh, facing, and we are trying to uh, manage all of them according to a uh, whole uh, strategical task of higher education in Ukraine. As you can see on the slide, um, we have this strategy 
uh, the whole Ukrainian strategy of uh, higher education uh, development. And uh, it consists of different points and the bullet points are presented here on the slide. And you can see that for us, it's very important that uh, to find the balance between the labor market, uh, to find the specialists with good and very uh, qualified specialists with higher education, to ensure the quality and accessibility of higher education to different segments of the population, and for us, it's very important to implement the concept of uh, lifelong learning and to uh, make this concept not only on paper, but to make it real. What are we, what are we doing at the uh, Dnipro University of Technology to improve all these uh, aspects and to uh, fill the gaps that we are having now? Uh, again, despite the war and despite the things that we have now. Please, the next slide. Uh, so uh, before, before the war, before the war, uh, we had two different, no, uh, the previous one, sorry. Um, before the war, we had two different aspects. We had the uh, real aspect of everyday life at Dnipro University of Technology. And we have the uh, international uh, or, um, sorry, IT environmental aspect of Nipro University of Technology. Uh, Albina, please, 28th slide. So uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, before the war we had, uh, we have developed many different areas where the students and teachers um, of different faculties, different study groups, different study programs, they could develop themselves and uh, they could uh, they could help each other uh, with educational process. It, as you can see, there are about uh, 10 uh, spaces of creative uh, support or creative cooperation we had uh, we have now at Dnipro University of Technology. And before the war, uh, they were working separately and they working together with the IT environment and our uh, distance platform uh, that is based on Office 365. Since 2015, we have, uh, we have subscribed the agreements with the Microsoft Office Ukraine uh, and already seven years, uh, we are, uh, our, all our IT environment is based on this platform. And uh, in this case, we were ready to support our students in uh, different ways. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, now, uh, now we have all our digital platform, including the website, e-learning digital platform, scientific library, everything is based uh, on uh, this. And uh, I would like to say that despite all the things, despite all the problems with the internet that have started, uh, that have started from February 2022. Uh, despite all those things, um, uh, all the platforms are working now and uh, they are all accessible and uh, uh, they work in different forms. They work in distance way. They work in uh, synchronously, asynchronously, it doesn't matter. So uh, for us, it's very important that all our students uh, despite the problems, despite the uh, specific things that are now in Ukraine, uh, they have the access to uh, very qualified personnel of university, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the next slide, please. Uh, to promote and to assure uh, the whole Ukrainian society uh, that uh, Dnipro University of Technology has the online platform uh, uh, since uh, March 2012, 2022, we have opened all our courses to the wide audience. Uh, only during the March, uh, we had uh, 60 stu students, 70 students from temporarily replaced university that have su uh, subscribed online courses of Nipro University Technology and they have uh, they, they're working now with our students, they are working with our teachers, and it's very important for us that uh, they have the access to necessary uh, study programs and to uh, important, and, and they can just uh, uh, be the part of uh, 
the other university and they can follow and continue their educational process at Dnipro University of Technology. Uh, for us, we don't have the foreign students. For us, we don't have uh, the students uh, that are from the other universities. For us, it's very important that students uh, uh, is everywhere and students uh, should not be left alone with their problems. So top three choices uh, according to the votes, uh, IT uh, programs, management and electric power engineering. Uh, these programs have the most uh, wide audience. And uh, according to our questionnaires, uh, each week we have a specific, uh, uh, so, so how to say the, the questionnaire and responses for the questionnaires. So each week we have about uh, 1,200 responses. Uh, uh, according to our uh, um, thoughts and according to our analysis, we believe that it's very big audience. Uh, it's more than 20% uh, of the whole audience of uh, that are uh, working and they are studying permanently at the university. So we believe this good uh, numbers and we are keeping touch with our students. We hear our students and we try to respond uh, any specific tasks they are uh, asking us. So uh, the next slide, please. Uh, to summarize uh, all the results, I would like to say that uh, our university is uh, already uh, included in uh, the uh, post-war restoration process. So uh, we uh, really believe that the scale of destructions and the branches across the territory of the country is extremely big. Uh, according to uh, statistics, uh, more than 300 higher education, uh, 300 educational institutions are completely destroyed and more than, more than 3,000 education establishments are uh, um, partly destroyed in Ukraine. It's great numbers. It's, a, it's only official statistics, but we believe that numbers, real numbers are bigger than those that I've told you. So uh, we, we, we really feel that uh, we have the big needs in professionals with certain skills and specific professions, and our university is ready to uh, follow these uh, specific uh, trends, and uh, we're ready to uh, be the basis for further development of Ukraine. So we strongly believe that further development of e-learning environment, uh, professional and soft skills of lectures, it's very important, significant for further development of whole Ukraine. Uh, without digitalization of university, without digitalization of study process, it's impossible to move to a better future of whole Ukraine and higher education and to a uh, better uh, future of the Ukraine at all. So uh, thank you for uh, thank you for possibility to uh, speak. Uh, thank you for uh, be with you, and uh, we are always ready to be uh, the university that helps Ukraine to develop uh, the economy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nicole, and thank you very and thank to your university and to your colleagues for all work you do. And uh, thank you to Dnipro city, to my native city. Uh, after uh, the full scale invasion of uh, Russia to Ukraine on February 24, Ukrainian students, teachers, universities uh, face a new uh, wave of uh, challenges, new wave of universities relocation. <laughs> uh, 20 <clears throat> 29 Ukrainian universities were relocated since, since the start of full-scale uh, war invasion. And among these universities, Melitopol State Pedagogical University, and uh, today we have a speaker, uh, acting wise rector for scientific work of Bogdan Khmelnytsky Melitopol uh, State Pedagogical University, Konovalin Katechana. Pani uh, Katechana, please, the floor is yours. Hello, it's a pleasure for me to be a participant of such an urgent event. I will share the experience of Bogdan Khmelnytsky Melitopol State Pedagogical University's functioning and viability in the wartime. But the report will also correlate with the issues other Ukrainian universities are facing now. You know, this year is no, uh, there is no safe place in Ukraine from February 24th till now. There are uh, the universities which work at their permanent location, those which were relocated 
eight years ago and are staying in the same place. Those relocated this year and those which underwent two relocations eight years ago and this year once more. Uh, so uh, one more crucial condition uh, for the university's functioning has uh, to be taken into account. It's the state of infrastructure and facilities. Now it's various in universities. In some universities, it is the same. In some, utterly damaged. Uh, or either totally damaged or totally, loca uh, totally located in the occupied territory. Uh, our university was relocated from Melitopol to Zaporizhia on the 12th of May this year. All infrastructure and facilities are staying in the occupied territory. Hortica National Learning and Rehabilitation Academy hosted us, but our teachers and students are scattered all over Ukraine. Uh, some of them are abroad, both students and teachers. We finished the previous academic year uh, in the distance mode. We have begun the new academic year distantly as well. Last semester, learning and teaching was mostly realized on the Moodle platform uh, on the side of the Center of Distance Educational Technologies. The modes of teaching and learning were combined as we used both synchronous and asynchronous modes. Uh, some students didn't have internet connection at home, so they came to the university until that became too dangerous. There were the challenges for them to find the location uh, with the access to the internet. We prohibited their, our students to come to the university buildings as soon as we understood that there was real danger to them and their lives. You know, the most valuable uh, is the lives of our students and our teachers. Uh, the teachers uh, had uh, made maximum efforts to organize high quality content and creative design of the courses. Uh, on the screen, you can see the screenshots uh, of some of the uh, courses uh, from our Moodle platform. Uh, our students and teachers uh, have the freedom of choice as for combining the software and tools for learning and teaching. Moodle, uh, in Mo into Moodle platform, a platform uh, the big blue button system was built in. And now uh, our uh, center of uh, informational technologies uh, is uh, um, building in Zoom, into uh, the uh, Zoom platform. Uh, as uh, the alternative, our teachers uh, and students used Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, uh, wonder me uh, and uh, such online resources as Altspace we are at puzzle care utopia jambo and uh, many other uh, useful resources and software and we are happy uh, that uh, there are uh, such opportunities for us uh, to use uh, some of these uh, software uh, on the free basis uh, it's a great support for Ukrainian uh, universities. Even in the conditions of very restricted access to the internet, the students and teachers did their best to continue their learning, teaching, and the research. Uh, so collaboration with stakeholders helped us to implement the creative and professionally useful ideas. For example, in May, the binary practice session with non-governmental organization Institute of Psychodrama modern psychology and, and psychotherapy uh, uh, from Kyiv was held for students. The techniques of psychodrama uh, were practically exploit, explored. Self-presentation, uh, exchange of roles, duplicating, returning to the side. There was a conversation about uh, psychotherapeutic mechanisms of psychodrama, action, insight, catharsis, spontaneity, role play, tele-identification. Uh, and um, our university community continued to take part in national and international scientific events. In May, our university was a co-organizer of the 14th International Conference on Mathematics, Science and Technology Education. So our researchers presented their results on relevant issues. The impact, for example, the impact of psychological and learning training uh, on educational motives and reflective skills of future IT specialists. 
In reality, our students and teachers didn't stop uh, their professional development. But we faced new challenges. The occupation of the university by Russian soldiers and those who started collaboration with them, mobile and internet disconnection. The university administration forecasted the massive internet blackout and changed the terms and conditions of the summer examination session. It was assessed according to the accumulated during the semester points. Uh, so uh, flexibility helped us to avoid serious risks as the occupiers created the Suda University in Melitopol and tried to gather stu uh, students there, preparing the live shield uh, and zombie mass as all students who agreed to go there immersed in the world of Russian propaganda and a lot of Russian soldiers uh, are staying in the buildings of the university. Uh, the summative examinations for obtaining academic degree or bachelor and master were held decently as well. Uh, I was a scientific supervisor of uh, two graduates who participated in the defense of their master's papers distantly while staying in their position defending our native Ukraine. And we can give a lot of such examples. For, com for communication with the students, various uh, messengers were used, such as Viber, Telegram. Uh, the absence of mobile connection resembled our returning to the Stone Age. But our students found uh, the places where they could uh, get the access to the Internet. The official site of the university and social media in Facebook, Instagram, Telegram helped to inform our students, uh, though there was the dead period uh, when the university temporary authorities secretly started collaboration with the occupiers. That was a real challenge not to undergo the provocation, stay nationally con conscient and stay free. As the occupiers began to kidnap those who demonstrated that their Ukrainian spirit and uh, mentality. Uh, there were several uh, university teachers kidnapped and some students as well. Uh, so uh, uh, psychological support for students was also organized and there were numerous meetings for them in Zoom with university and faculties administration. Uh, our teachers reconceptualized their courses and created the new ones on the basis of their project activity. Uh, researchers continuing professional development uh, with a special focus on students' overall safety, including the information space, and not only avoiding armored people, but also resisting fake, distorted information, Russian propaganda. We tried to improve the procedure of selective part of study programs and started the practice of creating short videos for optional courses, a lot of which were designed as a result of participating in projects and grant activities. Our teachers and students will stay in the active participants of learning and teaching process, professional activities, extracurricular events, civic actions, informal education, uh, and academic mobility. In this, uh, in this um, um, slide, you can see Anastasia Yakovenko. Uh, she started her participation in higher education teaching excellence program before the war. Uh, she was a participant and then she in the second wave she uh, became a facilitator uh, now she is uh, on her continuing professional development in great britain thanks uh, thank you uh, for uh, giving such a wonderful support so uh, before the start of the new academic year we asked students about their learning and difficulties they have experienced since the start uh, of uh, the war uh, there are some uh, results of the small scale uh, survey. Uh, students from some universe, seven universities took part in it, but mostly our students. We don't have a very big number of respondents, uh, a little more than 200. Uh, so uh, you see that uh, the ways of communication between students and teachers are social media, university site of distance learning, messengers, audio messages, uh, okay. uh, sometimes through groups monitor uh, such systems as Zoom, Big Blue Button, Google Meet, uh, and uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, email and mobile phone. You see that uh, through that that period, two percent of students didn't have any communication, but eighty six percent used several ways. So they found uh, that. Uh, possibility. 
Uh, and uh, as for the other results of this survey, it's about the ways of getting psychological consultative information, other kinds of support. Uh, the ways for getting that support were the same as the ways of communication. As for difficulties, I cite our students' answers. They um, complained of absence of electricity, mobile and internet connection, uh, academic uh, overload, uh, not quite clear instructions, lack of information, feeling depressed, uh, a lot of other health problems because you see uh, we ha uh, were having a uh, humanitarian disaster in Melitopol and uh, they couldn't even find uh, necessary medicines. Uh, problems of concentration, of course, uh, shelling, uh, air alarms, time management, and they uh, feel the needs for uh, humanitarian support, psychological and financial support, compassion, uh, more information. Uh, they want to return home, uh, to uh, be free from occupation, to have stable internet and mobile connection, and uh, to uh, get to know that uh, we uh, have won the occupiers. Uh, so uh, our future, our nearest um, perspectives of development are uh, creating virtual laboratories, uh, academic uh, mobility, augmented reality to visualize uh, because in distant learning, uh, creating some new courses, professionals and stakeholders hold us more active participation, uh, use uh, of active methods and skills oriented content. Uh, so, uh, we are sure that Ukraine will prevail. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Tatiana. Uh, yes, the victory over the occupiers is our common goal and common wish and common dream. So uh, we hope for it and we pray for it. Uh, now is very um, thankful to QAA uh, for uh, today's event focus because it's focused on quality of students' learning experience. And uh, uh, we, we really, within this session, we really need to hear the voices of our students. And I, I'm very thankful and grateful to uh, students who join, join uh, us today and uh, we will have three students and uh, student speakers and uh, uh, I would like to give uh, the floor to the president, the acting president of Ukrainian Association of Students, uh, Valina Hambalerska. Valina, over to you. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, it is without any doubt. Uh, do you hear me? And uh, this is a presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, it is without any doubt that the military intervention uh, of the Russian Federation into Ukraine has provoked uh, significant alterations in the organization of study process in Ukrainian higher education institutions. The next slide, please. Uh, realizing the complexity of the situation the Ukrainian students find themselves in, uh, the Ukrainian Association of Students initiated uh, a national student survey uh, on further organization of the involvement uh, campaign and study processing during wartime. The next slide. Uh, the survey was conducted in March 2022. Uh, 5,427 students from 25 regions of Ukraine uh, participated. The next slide. The question of communication between uh, higher education institutions and students regarding the organization of study was answered in the following way. The next slide. Well, by administration or local education quality control center, 31.8%. Uh, well, by student union, 30.5%. Meetings, round tables, uh, and debates, 1.7%. Uh, plan alignment with the student 
Students' Union, 16.6%, uh, and uh, no communication with students, 19.3%. Uh, I would like to comment on the following two parameters. I was displeased by the last parameter where every fifth student testified to a lack of communication and an insufficient degree of active communication. The next slide. Next question is, uh, do universities take students' opinion into account when making executive decisions during wartime? And here are the results. The next slide. Yes, completely, 25.9%. Uh, yes, partially, 18.1%. No, 16%. And difficult to say, 40%. The last parameter is worrying because it shows uh, a certain lack of conviction on the student side. Remember that 62% 60, uh, of respondents confirmed the presence of communication, but an entire 40% of respondents uh, didn't inquire as to its consequences. Even in wartime, uh, such number is disturbing. Uh, the next slide, please. And if in Ukraine, the question of student centrism is a question uh, of stable function of an institution, in Britain, service have achieved a status where both students and higher education institutions account for them. Uh, for instance, uh, the next slide, please. For instance, uh, survey uh, results have an important role uh, in British students' choice of higher education institutions. Uh, Ukraine, too, makes its first steps in this direction. Uh, the next slide, please. The National Action Plan for External Assurance of the Quality of Higher Education includes a point on developing uh, and commencing a national survey on a permanent basis, which would allow for a better understanding of Ukrainian students' needs and in the future, developing proposals uh, for bettering uh, the quality of study process. And back to the March survey. The next slide, please. Uh, one of the questions was directed uh, at the future of the enrollment campaign. Where do the students plan to enroll to receive their next educational level? Uh, the next slide, please. And here are the results. Uh, they uh, plan to enroll in Ukraine, 60.2%. Mm, they plan to enroll abroad, 3.1%. Uh, they haven't decided yet. 20.2% and they don't plan on enrolling 16.5%. Uh, Let's stress the fact that despite the battles fought, Ukrainian students primarily select native Ukrainian higher uh, education institutions. It is uh, worth stressing that the youth, when choosing Ukrainian institutions, realizes that wartime requires changes in preparation of specialists. Students understand that thanks to structured modern education, they can be useful to their country in wartime and in post-war reconstruction. Uh, we therefore suggest uh, changes in the standards of higher education on certain study programs. The next slide, please. The first one, the psychology program, notably uh, requires changeables in, uh, prepare, in preparation of uh, graduates. It is our opinion that an accent needs to be placed on rehabilitative experts uh, of the program. Uh, changes also needed uh, in the medicine program. Uh, currently, it needs to account for various combat wounds and the recovery process of soldiers and uh, civilians. Uh, we consider architecture and city planning program another example of changes needed. Uh, we consider it necessary to prepare such specialists who would consider not only comfort, but also reliability of dwellings and uh, social buildings. In light of lack of time, we limit ourselves to these proposals. We believe and hope that the assurance of positive change will be the British specialist aid that has been enriched by their in turn experience in war zones and experience in preparing 
specialists for war and peace time. Thus, uh, next slide, please. Uh, thus, uh, the proposals we submit to you are developing survey methodology and organizing training for its authors, along with the creation of a system to facilitate national student service. Uh, the next one, a revision of certain components of higher education in designated with the involvement of organization and experts that have experience uh, working in post-war countries undergoing reconstruction. Thank you for your attention. Dear Kalina, thank you very much for your uh, presentation and thank you for useful suggestions. So probably they will start, uh, they will be like a starting point for the discussion during the panel and group discussions uh, during today's event. <clears throat> thank you very much for this. And uh, colleagues, you know, we in Ukraine uh, there is more than one million students, uh, and uh, each student in each Ukrainian student now has own uh, experience, own story during the war. How how they studied during the war? How how what are they doing during the war? And uh, um, I would like to invite uh, Irina uh, Zayarnyuk to share her experience of studying during the war. Irina, please. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, do you hear me uh, well? Okay, great. Uh, thank you. So, uh, dear educators, dear colleagues, uh, my name is Irina Zayarnyuk, and first of all, I have been a student of uh, Boris Grinchenko Kiev University for five years and the secretary of the Scientific Society of my Faculty of Psychology, Social Work and Special Education, as well as a successful practitioner in social work in my 20s. So having the honor to represent the experience of being a student at my institution, and um, I named my um, report Students Learning Ex Experience, the Constant Pursuit of Excellence, because it reflects the reality of my university. The pursuit of development, improvement, perfection is about us. The next slide, please. Um, it's about the values of our community. And in fact, I hope to encourage you to smile uh, from the image of our patron, Boris Grinchenko in a pink Panama, but also hide a certain symbolism in it. Our university combines modern um, educational practices with preservation of cultural tradition and civic consciousness. Boris Grinchenko was a great educator, complied the first dictionary of Ukrainian language and fought for Ukrainian statehood for 100 years ago. And uh, in 2040, students and teachers of our university, his followers participated in the revolution of dignity or Euromaidan, as you can know, uh, in order to support European values. They were not afraid of Yanukovych totalitarian attitudes then, just as our students who are fighting for peace in all of Europe as soldiers are not afraid of Putin of the Russian army now. Next slide, please. So um, in my opinion, perhaps uh, the best modern offer of Boris Grinchenko Kiev University is the continuity of education or lifelong education principle as well. Uh, you can enter college as a child at the age of 50, taking the first steps uh, towards your future profession and complete your academic journey as a PhD, a true expert in your field uh, around 25, 30 years old. In this way, you grow as a person within the walls of the university. <laughs> I think I have right uh, to talk about the benefits of this. Um, science, I personally entered the Applied College in University of the Boris Grinchenko Kiev University after the ninth grade of school. For four years, I studied as a social pedagogy, had a lot of practice and graduated from the institution, receiving a diploma with honors. So after college, I enrolled in a bachelor programs and uh, I'm able, able to contain my education. Next slide, please. Mm. 
Glinchenka University is an institution that knows very well what the right educational environment is. Uh, the most interesting activity for me during the last five years uh, within the walls of the university was participation in the meeting of the scientific society. Uh, in Ukraine, almost every institution of higher education has its own scientific society of students, postgraduates, doctoral students, and young scientists. Uh, through my studies, I have been an active member of the scientific society, participating in the organization of scientific meetings, tea parties, conferences, discussions, or workshops. Uh, the most in important scientific events of the year for our university for more than 10 years is the all Ukrainian scientific and practical conference from an idea to uh, implementation. During such an event, students of our and other higher education institutions from all over Ukraine uh, have the opportunity to hear interesting reports, the plenary session, and take part in the project competition. Students can present the idea of their own educational, cultural, or social, social project and receive the first small funding for its implementation from the competition fund. Two years ago, I was the winner of such a competition with my social project, and I will tell you about this implementation a bit later. Next slide, please. Um, Grinchenka University is about learning through projects, not boring formal classes. Students learn to, through the ability to set a time frame, a goal, identify resources, and organize a team. For example, when I study uh, the subject social communications, I learned to create real projects. Um, yes, uh, real projects, for example, advocacy or information campaigns. I think through everything from sources of funding and advertising, advertising design. Uh, I present my idea to others, and that's how I get the final assessment. Uh, so, however, it is fun to study not even specialized, but general subjects at the university. In the photo, you can see the university project, uh, Bureau of Theatrical Excursion. A history teacher and her students take to the streets of Kyiv and conduct free tours for citizens. The teacher is a tour guide and the students learn history while playing the roles of people from the past. Uh, on this slide, you can also see me in Ukrainian traditional clothes. So uh, two years ago, my partner and I submitted the idea of social project, which we called lounge gestures, uh, to a competition at a scientific conference. We know that the large lawyer of Ukrainian traditional culture is um, inaccessible to people with disabilities, as, for example, deaf people cannot hear a traditional song. That's why we decided to, to translate one traditional Ukrainian song uh, into sign language and shoot a video in which sound and sign language will sound simultaneously as a symbol of equality. Uh, as you already know, the project received funding from Vincenka University. Next slide, please. Instead of words, I will show you how it was. Please, Albina, uh, turn on this video. Uh, so, okay, it just um, one. Um, part one picture from this video from our um, video clip yes uh, that um, we created for uh, deaf people uh, and in process of working of the project um, i as a coordinator submitted the project to another competition with the help of the Kiev Regional Youth Center and received um, grant funding uh, under the Active Citizens Program from the British Council. Uh, we did it. <laughs> I managed it. Uh, student journalists did advertising, designers took photo and made visual content. Everyone had their own role. Uh, in general, I managed a team uh, consists of more than 50 people. And I am proud of us. <laughs> Next slide, please. 
So I shared with you the main advantages of the university, uh, community, modernity. In addition, our university has a convenient website for e-learning. Uh, every student has access to the program of all their subjects, all the segments, and can complete uh, and download them uh, at any time of the day. I'm also grateful to my university for international uh, cooperation because um, I was really lucky, good or God or Boris Grinchenko saved me uh, because I left to participate in the Erasmus Plus program in the Czech Republic a week before the start of a full scale um, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, next slide, please. Brinchenko University is practice oriented. During the last five years, I had more than uh, 10 short internships um, as a teacher in public school or as a social worker in public organization. In almost every bachelor program um, of the university, first three years are through theory and almost all of the fourth years uh, year is uh, practice or internships, uh, which the university helps you find and supports you with supervision. Uh, next slide, please. Um, at Grinchenko University, we are taught that we can do anything. We are shown that we can have many roles with uh, one speciality. We learn this truth when we create our own project or get a job. Education at our university really gives an opportunity to be a successful specialist. For three months before leaving for the Czech Republic, I worked as a communication manager in the state structure Kiev City Center for Gender Equality. For more than one year, I have been working in the largest civil society organization uh, in Ukraine, which combats domestic violence, La Strada Ukraine, uh, in parallel with my studies. At the university, I have an individual study plan and support. At work, I am a consultant for the national toll-free hotline for children and youth. Even the last six months during my Erasmus and the full-scale war, I work remotely and receive calls from children and teenagers from all over Ukraine. We as supporters talk to them about their love and anxiety, about war, true of um, thoughts of suicide or self-harm, and that there is a hope you can become an independent person in independent country when you have a good education. Next slide, please. So thank you for your attention, dear colleagues. Dear Irina, thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, during the presentation, Irina was going to show us a video, but unfortunately during uh, due to some technical reasons it didn't play, but Irina will share the link in the chat so you will be able to watch this video. Well, and uh, uh, one more presentation uh, for, for today from and one more student voice, and uh, uh, now it's time for very special speaker today. Uh, actually, be really worried if uh, he was able to join us and present his speech uh because it's, he he's at the front line <clears throat> and just two weeks before february 24 i met with kirilla who is a student of Kiev mahila academy and some other active students to discuss their vision of the future reforms in her education sphere uh and when the war came to our houses and a lot of people uh were in panic uh, uh, leaving their cities and running to the western border of Ukraine. On February 24, I saw uh, a post in Facebook made by Kirillo, and uh, uh, he wrote, I have three Kiev hills and San Sofia Cathedral. And uh, on the same day, he voluntarily joined the armed forces of Ukraine. Now he defends Ukraine at the front line. And Kirilla, I, I would like to thank you and all barriers of Ukraine uh, that we still wake up in the independent Ukraine. Thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, super. So, uh, 
I will start. I will uh, uh, make a little brief uh, so about our situation. So uh, when the war started, uh, before war started on February 2023, 20, uh, I was uh, uh, the fourth year historian student uh, at the Kiev Mohila Academy. And also um, I worked in uh, one of the Ukrainian students union. We provided uh, academic mobility inside Ukraine. Uh, we uh, made some educational projects uh, and uh, many, many, uh, much more. So, uh, but uh, when the war started, me and uh, my closest colleagues uh, uh, joined uh, Ukrainian army force, forces and uh, uh, I decided to, uh, to stay in Kyiv and uh, several of my friends uh, um, uh, were with me th that time. And uh, some of my friends uh, uh, went uh, to the uh, West regions, for example, to Lviv, where they started uh, uh, voluntary vo works. But uh, I, I will uh, say, I, I will tell about it uh, a little bit um, uh, after some time. Uh, and now I just wanted to show you some, some uh, maybe moments, uh, discuss about some moments uh, about our students at war. So next slide, please. Uh, so uh, right now I can say that uh, in the Ukrainian territorial defense structures in uh, Ukrainian uh, armed forces in uh, National Guard of Ukraine, uh, there are uh, more than 2,100 uh, 2, students. So uh, that there are people who were uh, at the universities uh, at the beginning of the um, February, but they joined uh, our armed forces. And uh, right now, some of them are on the front line. Some of them are uh, in other uh, Ukrainian regions. Some of them are studying military uh, arts in um, uh, Great Britain, for example. So I know uh, two students of Lviv National University who are now uh, in the Great Britain and they are studying uh, uh, at the army courses. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, this is maybe one of the most interesting uh, moments that, uh, and one of the most cruel and one of the most uh, dismal for us because uh, there are a lot of students who died. And uh, this, uh, this photo, uh, this is photo from uh, exhibition uh, uh, at the Lviv city. So uh, this is diplomas of students who had never get, uh, got it. Uh, so um, during uh, more than 40 students uh, died on the front line. And uh, for example, one of, from, from my university, uh, he was uh, second year, uh, um, uh, second year course uh, from the faculty of humanities. Uh, he was, uh, uh, psychologist, if I remember, yes. And uh, there are a lot of students from uh, other universities who died in the Ukrainian army forces. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is very interesting that uh, this connection between young people, for, between students and uh, prof uh, professional uh, uh, military workers uh, with soldiers, uh, which you can see at the front line, this is really unbelievable and really uh, maybe uh, maybe we can see it first time in our history uh, because uh, in the Ukrainian army right now uh, you can see the full um, uh, social uh, social scale and uh, this uh, absolutely different uh, uh, type of uh, social circles uh, which are connected and which are sitting and fighting in uh, one trenches. Uh, next slide please. Yes, uh, I said that a lot of our students uh, right now are um, working uh, volunteer centers. So, uh, oh, okay, uh, in volunteer centers, and uh, for example, my friends are working at the Lviv. They uh, uh, during the war they uh, made more than uh, they raised more than uh, one million two hundred thousands of uh, dollars for Ukrainian humanitarian aid and also they are supporting us uh, with uh, some ammunition with uh, sometimes uh, with uh, uh, some uh, uh, defense guns with uh, helms and with other uh, types of uh, ammunition and equipment uh, 
uh, and uh, this is very powerful and this is very uh, symbolical for us that uh, student unions and that uh, student society uh, is still united and uh, we can ask for this help uh, every time and every night and uh, we will get this help. Uh, next slide, please. Um, also, I must say that uh, students uh, keep learning during the war and it is very interesting because, um, for example, uh, I get my bachelor uh, uh, level just one week uh, ago uh, and uh, I, no, uh, I was able to make my uh, uh, diploma work in uh, trenches sometimes, sometimes when I was on the polygons. And uh, this is maybe one of the most interesting diploma uh, uh, research works in my life. And uh, really, this is very symbolical that uh, I know uh, five people who uh, made their diploma works when they are uh, on the front line. And uh, really, it was very cool. And it is very interesting combination of science and of war. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and also, I need to say that um, when I told you about this very interesting connection uh, between uh, Ukrainian students, Ukrainian professional soldiers and other, other people uh, who are now uh, in Ukrainian army forces, uh, this connection is uh, the powerful platform of new uh, social connection and a new social dialogue and uh, of constructing uh, maybe new Ukrainian national ideas. And uh, um, the role, uh, this role of Ukrainian students in the trenches, this is maybe uh, one of the most powerful that uh, they can do right now. Uh, and uh, ideas of Ukrainian students, idea of, of uh, uh, good education of new nation without corruption with uh, normal educational system with uh, powerful science uh, which will be the platform to build new economy and uh, new universities. Uh, this is very important for us, and that's why uh, we feel this uh, unbelievable process of birth of the new nation. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to go for a moment because uh, I'm a polygon now, and uh, uh, please miss me. Uh, I'm, uh, I apologize, and uh, I need to stop my, uh, uh, my speech. Okay, oh, sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kirill. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for everything you're doing with your uh, barriers, with your teammates, uh, uh, for, for our country, for our Ukrainian people. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and, and yes, this is very unique experience our students have. Mm -hmm. So, Actually, this is uh, all uh, presentations from uh, Ukrainian Voices side. So Ian uh, and uh, uh, colleagues from uh, the uh, QA, probably you would like to, to, to uh, add something or probably you have any questions. Uh, we are very happy to answer to all, all your questions and to, to, uh, to questions from our audience, from our participants. Uh, we still have some time to uh, to Q and A uh, session within the uh, this first part of our event. Thank you very much indeed, Natalia. Um, those were inspiring and humbling presentations. And it's clear that Ukrainian universities and the students are doing an amazing job in incredibly difficult circumstances. So thank you so much for putting the time and effort into, um, into, into such a, a remarkable presentations. So as Natalia says, this is the time when you could start asking some questions. Um, we want to open this to the floor. Um, so, if anybody has any burning questions, please, to start off with. I think some of my colleagues do, and I, I, I have a few. But let's open it to the floor first. Does anybody have any burning questions that they'd like to ask our Ukrainian colleagues, please, um, who, who've been so, um, uh, so ably present, presenting this morning? Perhaps you could put up your hand if, you, if you've got a question you'd like to ask.
I leave you feeling a bit shy, I could start off with one. Right, I'll start off with one. Um, it's a question to students, to the students that we've had here. What would you like most from any UK Ukrainian academic initiative? What do you think would be of most benefit to you from any Ukrainian and UK academic initiative? This question is to you, so please, uh, what would be your answers? Oh, it's a good question. I haven't <laughs> answered now. I think I need to have my time for think about it more deeply. <laughs> it is a big question. <laughs> what do you think we should prioritize? Anybody got any thoughts? Maybe we could let people think about that for a minute because Ruth's got a hand up. I think Ruth Stoke has got a hand up. Mm -hmm. which I, I guess means you might have a question okay because that's a big question isn't it it's quite big all right Ruth thank you thank you hiya um uh, my question is to the students um because they were talking about wanting a national student survey type of system in Ukraine. So my question for them is, what sort of things would you like to include on your national student survey? What is it important for you to have in a stable question set for your students? Carolina? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. I think that uh, um, now at times it's important um, to uh, direct the questions um, in uh, the enrollment campaign and uh, to the uh, organization of uh, educational process. Uh, and also uh, it's uh, important to, uh, to realize the needs of students uh, to develop uh, the uh, process uh, in the future. Polina, I think the question was about the software. And if you wish, you can answer in Ukrainian. Because we have uh, translation. <clears throat> Так, прошу вибачення, маю неполадки із зв'язком. Загалом із опитуванням, що проводять у Великобританії, його проводять на основі аналітичного центру, який є незалежним. Відповідно, таким чином є можливість прибрати усі нюанси і чесно показувати та аналізувати усю інформацію. І, на мою думку, якраз таки на основі такого забезпечення, програмного забезпечення, яке буде незалежним, було б доцільно створювати опитування і для українських закладів вищої освіти. Thank you. Ruth, does that help you? Thank you. Yes, a little. It's um, obviously in the UK, uh, we ask a very particular type of question about the student experience of their programmes. Um, and and I'm just thinking that within the Ukraine, within within Ukraine, um, they they could have there they might very well be different questions that they want to ask of their students because of the context that they are in. And I would have been interested to hear um, what they might be. Though I am aware this might take some thinking about too. So happy to hear later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
probably if our colleagues from the universities can contribute to these questions because they can help uh, with, with the uh, well, I know that surveys are done in Dnipro, uh, Polytechnics, and also in the next national university. So probably you can also, uh, you know, just give the general uh, ideas how it happens and what could be suggestions here. <clears throat> Colleagues, anybody would like to, to share, to, to add to this question? If not, we can uh, we can move to another one. I have got another question. Okay. From Adam Sutter. Adam, do you want to, do you want to ask this question yourself, or shall I shall I do it from the discussion board? Sure, I'm happy to ask myself. Um, Thank you, Adam. Yeah, so I was just curious about the practicalities of ensuring access for students to digital resources when physical university spaces are being occupied. Obviously, like, the servers need to be maintained for students to be able to access these resources. But the security of those servers, would, I assume, be very easy to be compromised. Um, so I was curious about the the measures in place to ensure that access for students while ensuring that research uh, data and other university data and servers are kept secure during the invasion. Well, I think this question is mainly to vice rectors. So who, who of our speakers from vice rectors could, could uh, uh, respond? So, uh, dear colleagues, if you, I, I think that I can probably uh, add as far as I understood. Uh, <laughs> what about the server equipment? Yes, with uh, during the the this period, or, or may I ask question precisely? What what uh, would you like to uh, hear? Um, I guess I'm curious about how you manage to maintain security of information mm -hmm. so, so uh, maintaining the servers being available for students to access while also not leaving the information within the servers available to be taken advantage of by uh by russian forces and such like okay so uh if you don't mind i can start and then uh uh tatiana can can uh, share uh, her experience so uh about Dnipro university of technology since the first day of uh, the war start we have um we have uh three different dimensions of informations that are available on the server uh first one is the information that contains some specific things like personal information and uh, business information from our uh, accounting uh, department. So this information is completely offline now, and uh, we, we have no access to from the server uh, for this information. So uh, the another type of information is the information about the students uh, and information about their um marks etc cetera, etc cetera. some study programs uh, so so uh, this information is available at the server and this information is uh, now uh up to date uh, and uh, we make the backups of this information twice a week uh, we have also the cloud cloud server and we 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 are trying to manage all of these things twice a week so in third type of information, it's the uh, information about the lectures, information about the uh, study materials, et cetera, et cetera. So this information is also uh, three, two, time, two times a month uh, is backupped to the cloud storage, uh, and it's completely available at our servers. So uh, three, three, three levels. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed, Mikhail. Okay. If you want to, I will continue. Other, please. Since 2012, the Donetsk University works directly with Microsoft Office, 
і відповідно використовує всі ліцензовані програми і всі електронні можливості Microsoft Office 365. І відповідно саме це дало можливості нам під час релокації у 2014 році зберегти в хмарних технологіях абсолютно все, починаючи з фінансових документів до відомостей академічної успішності студентів. Тому ми з 2014 року вже на новому місці за новою юридичною адресою видавали всі академічні довідки кожному студенту, апелюючи до кожної оцінки за кожною навчальною дисципліною. Відповідно, так, такий самий ресурс Microsoft 365, як Teams, всі абсолютно студенти розподілені на академічні групи в Teams, і відповідно там зберігаються і всі навчальні матеріали, і там відбуваються лекції, і там відбуваються консультації, але паралельно все це відбувається і в аудиторіях. Тому відбувається асинхронне навчання. Студент, який знаходиться, наприклад, як пан Кирил на передовій, він може в будь-який час асинхронно до часу свого розкладу зайти в свою групу, в Teams, або на Moodle, або в Google Class і безпосередньо ознайомитись з всім матеріалом, який був презентований викладачем під час навчального процесу відповідно до розкладу. І відповідно там є графік складання, там є можливість завантаження певних документів. Навіть якщо студент не зміг під час лекції на щось відповісти, він може асинхронно підтягнути цей матеріал і до модульного контролю завантажити виконання всіх завдань, які є обов'язковими задля опанування цієї дисципліни, для того, щоб отримати відповідні результати навчання і, відповідно, компетентності. Так само, відповідно, паралельно відбувається і з індивідуальною траєкторією, тобто ми маємо власні електронні сервіси, які розроблені нашими студентами під керівництвом наших викладачів, завдяки яким ми вимірюємо якість освіти. Тобто рейтингування всі, діяльності всіх кафедр, факультетів і кожного викладача відбувається електронно, Опитування здобувачів щодо якості викладання теж електронно вибирати траєкторію завдяки електронному ресурсу. І перша зустріч з роботодавцем у нашого випускника, але під час ще студент, студентства, теж відбувається завдяки власному електронному сервісу. Дякую. Thank you very much indeed. Are there any further questions around that? Are there any other questions that anybody's got um, that they have burning away? Uh, I'm looking for hands going up. There's a question from Polina. So for Polina, about the training being able to go to student representatives, that's on chat. And it's an answer to um, uh, Polina. Так, дозвольте, я відповім на питання. Насправді, у час війни університетам, закладам вищої освіти у зв'язку з різними подіями, які відбуваються, може бути складно для того, щоб провести опитування, щоб опрацювати велику кількість студентів та для того, щоб проаналізувати результати. Це є однією із причин для того, щоб проводити національне, загальнонаціональне опитування для студентів для того, щоб розуміти їхні потреби і зрозуміти, мати можливість почути кожну. Mm 
Thank you very much indeed. Are there some, are there some further questions, please, from, uh, from um, delegates? We have got a little bit of time left here. Are there some questions from any of my QAA colleagues or anybody who's... Any other delegates? Jenny, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I was interested um, in how you're dealing with the practical elements of, of courses. Obviously, it's very difficult for students to do placements, but are you? what sort of strategies are you adopting so that they can cover the practical elements? And is there any need for any help from UK universities in that area? Anybody like to respond to Jenny's question, please? Question also to vice rector. So our vice rector, the floor is yours. Yeah, Tiana, Navalinka, please. Well, if I have understood correctly, so you ask about uh, practical uh, courses or practices well uh, for example uh, our students as uh, i uh, represent the pedagogical university we have um, school pre school experience or school practice how to call it uh, well and uh, there was uh, such a big problem uh, for our students in spring uh, when uh, all the schools were occupied by russian soldiers as well and uh, their the uh, educational process under the occupational uh, government started uh, we uh, couldn't send our students uh, to have their school experience there uh, so we had uh, to transform our um, uh, academic year program and some of the students uh, some of the programs um, the school experience from of some of the programs was um, um, well uh, the, uh, the terms of it were changed and uh, they are having their school experience now uh, distantly in ukrainian schools uh, in the area under the uh control of ukraine uh but you see in this case i'm not sure that uh, our students uh, that it will be very easy for our students uh to join the school uh practice in uh, british schools for example uh because uh, i remember i uh, visited uh, several uh, british schools in uh, 2013 uh, and i remember that the procedure there was a special procedure uh, to join uh, the classes at school and i uh, i'm not sure that our students will uh, i think they will feel very humble some of them are very brave and they will be flexible and uh, will get uh, access if that was uh, possible but i know that a lot of our students are abroad and uh, we really uh, need some help to get in contact with them but the most problem is with the students who are staying in the occupied territory they have very bad uh, internet connection and for them it's very difficult uh, to find the opportunity to be a teacher uh, um, assistant uh, of teacher uh, and not to fail uh, because of the uh, internet disconnection for example so uh you see the uh, it's the multifaceted uh, problem uh, we try to solve it but uh, uh maybe uh there is a good um, it would be great if our students could join some uh courses uh some from uh, their study programs uh abroad and uh, for those students who have a good internet connection that would be a great condition uh that would be great support so thank you thank you very much indeed tatiana um just lastly before we go into um uh, the, the presentation about um uk initiatives uh 
Jeff from Imperial. Um, I think you had a supplementary, didn't you? Uh, or supplementary comment um, about the um, uh, 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 about the NSS. Jeff, do you want to just outline it before we uh, bring this to a close? Przepraszam, czy może ja dodatę? Nie wiem, Jeff. Yes, you can do. While well, Jeff's connecting. Szanowni kolegowie, dużo chcę podtrzymać swoją kolegę, pani Tetyanu, i mówić o tym, że my mamy taki doświad zaliczenia do otwartych elektronnych kursów naszych першу чергу аспірантів і студентів. І продовжуючи цю тему, хотіла б звернутися до наших британських колег з проханням подумати, яким чином можна не тільки приєднати наших здобувачів вищої освіти до відкритих електронних навчальних курсів, але й надавати кредити для того, щоб ми змогли потім перезарахувати ці кредити відповідно в межах нашої навчальної траєкторії. Дякую. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just one last question then from Robert Boyd. Um, Robert, are you there? I am, can you hear me? Yes, please, yeah, and then we'll, we'll go on to the next bit. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was just picking up on um, one of the a previous comment about marks and assessments being based on um, scores accrued during the year. Um, I was just wondering what other online assessment methods were being used. I mean, we've had experience of using the Inspira platforms, for example. I just wondered what universities had been using for assessments and any sort of issues that, that may have um, cropped up in that process. Any any responses to to the question? There's a response in chat from from Jeffrey with a link to um, uh, uh, the Inspira site. Yes, yeah, sorry, that was just one that was that, that, that came to mind. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there are other ones available. Anybody have any responses to, to Robert's question? Okay, well, perhaps you could, if you think of a response, perhaps you could put it in chat um, and then um, we could continue the conversation um, in, 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 in text format. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, I can see time's pressing on. I feel we ought to get on to uh, Ruth's presentation about the initiatives that are being done currently uh, between uh, UK institutions and uh, Ukrainian institutions. So Ruth, I'm gonna hand over to you. Thanks Ian. Um, just to check that everyone can hear me okay. Just give me a thumbs up from those on camera. That would be great. Can people hear me? Great, thank you guys. Um, so good morning or afternoon um, to you all. My name is Ruth Birchall. I'm a quality specialist in the global team at QAA. Um, I'm going to give a very short presentation today just about some of the current UK initiatives um, which aim to support Ukrainian HE um, that are currently ongoing in the UK at the moment. Um, and this is aimed to give you context to your discussions um, that you're about to have in the groups that we're going to move into after the break. Um, and hopefully it will act as a signpost as well. We will share these slides. I apologise, they're very text heavy. Um, I've designed them as a resource for you to look at after the event, and they do have links in them. Next slide, please, Albina. So the first one I'm going to talk about this morning um, is this network, the Universities of Sanctuary, has been developed through a partnership between the City of Sanctuary Article 26 
and the Student Action for Refugees, um, among others. The aim of it is to develop a culture and a practice of welcome within institutions, the wider community and across the HE sector in the UK. This network has um, issued some guidance for UK providers that summarises a selection of key ways in which the sector can support Ukrainian students, academics and institutions affected by conflict. This guidance is a live document um, that's regularly updated and can be accessed using the link on the slide here, which I've said we'll share after this event. It offers considerations for UK institutions looking to accept and support Ukrainian students, along with how to support institutions in Ukraine. Next slide, please. So this has already been alluded to in the chat during the Q&A um, previously. Um, and this is the twin, twinning scheme operated by Universities UK, the national representative body for UK universities, and also in partnership with Cormac Consultancy Group. It was launched very recently and is a major support program for Ukrainian universities called Twinning. Um, and it was launched in late June. The scheme has received £190,000 from the UK government, and so far 72 partnerships or twins have been created. Um, if you follow the link on screen, you can look at how to become a twinned university, and that's from the UK or Ukrainian side. Next slide, please. So just as a quick overview, what do these partnerships offer? And that's listed here on the slide. Um, but you can see the range of practical assistance these partnerships intend to offer, with a focus on support for the current climate, as well as looking to the future to rebuild. And um, it also offers a range of um, initiatives from practical help with physical re rebuilds to hosting summer schools in the UK, to sharing resources um, to support the well-being of students in Ukraine. Next slide, please. Um, so at the beginning of the 22-23 financial year, um, the government pledged to support, uh, four million pounds to support Ukrainian students studying at English higher education providers. This funding was confirmed in June 2022. And um, it will be interesting to see how these funds are or plan to be spent. And it might be good to find out from English colleagues in discussion groups about how they've allocated these funds to support Ukrainian students studying in the UK. Next slide, please. So based in London, CARA has been operating for 80 years. Um, it does have Ukraine specific campaigns going on at the moment. It's a membership organization um, and this organization helps academics who are at risk across the world. It works with HE institutions and organizations to offer practical and financial um, help to enable at risk academics and their families who are being forced to flee or at risk or are at risk of imprisonment to find temporary ref refuge and work in safety until they can return home to build better and safer societies. This organization relies on donations and partnerships with HE institutions, um, academic societies and organizations. Um, there's an online form for uh, Ukrainian and other academics um, for you to complete to see if you're eligible for support and again, this is given in the second link on this screen. Next slide, please. Um, this will be the last one that I talk about today. Um, the British Academy in CARA are establishing a researchers at risk fellowship program to cover a multitude of disciplines. It has received significant funding with 9.8 million pounds from the British government, half a million from the Nuffield Foundation, and £50,000 from SAGE Publishing. Institutions who wish to take advantage of this scheme must be CARA members, so that's from the UK side. 
for the researchers and innovators being able to take up a fellowship at a UK institution means that researchers can continue their research, enhance their skills and build long lasting collaborative links with the UK counterparts. And Ukrainians can apply for a visa under this scheme, under the Ukraine sponsorship scheme. So as you can see, these are quite large scale initiatives. Um, it was difficult to find uh, individual HE initiatives in the UK that were happening at local level, but on a national scale. So kind of everyone doing something locally that contributes to a national effort. If you're coming along to the discussions, it might be good to reflect on this. Um, there doesn't seem to be much currently that specifically looks at the student learning experience of students in the Ukraine. So for me, it, looked, it seemed very much more around the um, research um, side of things to, to prevent that brain drain that Olga was talking about earlier. Um, however, it would be really useful in these discussion groups to reflect on that student learning experience and what can we do um, from in partnership with the Ukraine um, to, to enhance this further. So we're now going to move into a short break. I'm sure many of you will appreciate the opportunity for a nice cup of coffee. Um, if you're attending the discussion groups, please be back for 11.30 or half past one um, in Ukrainian time. And if you're joining us for the outcomes of the discussion groups only, you can rejoin at five past 12 or five past two. Um, thank you for your time. Oh, colleagues, I'm sorry, we need clarification when everybody is back to the discussion group because uh, I know that it should be at uh, 11 uh, 40, right? Not 30. Yes, apologies. Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, in 10 minutes we are back. Yeah, so thank you. Discussion groups. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for your uh, presentations. Uh, Ruth, thank you for the presentation of initiatives and many thanks to all speakers and uh, for, for presentations and answers and the discussion. Thank you. Thank you.